You know, when you're researching the subject of building a fence on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of differing opinions. There's a lot of different thoughts out there on how you should build your next fence. So we've grabbed a few of them, and we're going to get my reactions as I watch the videos. Here we go. I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, so first impression before we even get started, the title, gate post fail. Gates are the number one issue when it comes to callbacks, return visits for fencing, so I'm not surprised to see that. Amateur hire fencing contractor, someone needs showing what they're doing. Contractor's cutting corner with fencing, happens all the time. Okay, YouTube, so uh, just on a fencing job at the moment, digging this post hole in, and uh, this is a post that the contractor's put in. So first impressions here, one, they installed it right next to a drain, like a road drainage. That's kind of worrisome, because how do they dig around the post, you know, wide enough around the post to set a full block of concrete around it? Probably didn't do that then, so that's worrisome. I see the end of the post and the uh, grade, it's obviously not very deep, let's see. And as you can see, it's literally maybe six inch deep. If that. Yeah, so uh, he's saying it's about six inches deep. I buy that. You know, the post is four by four, so you say, you know, four inches, yeah, it's about six inches deep. And unfortunately, so this is a place that uh, contractors can really cut some corners. Typically, the homeowners aren't home when the fence is being installed, or if they are, they're not out watching the fence get installed, right? So no one's really sure how deep those posts are set. I mean, it comes to integrity, right? So it comes down to the fencing contractor knowing that he's setting these posts to depth. In the Midwest, you know, we shoot for 24 inches deep now it obviously sounds like this fence isn't in the midwest so i'm not sure what the frost depth is but it is certainly not six inches and especially not on a gate post uh, this post is going to have a lot of weight you know one it's holding the fence up right but then also it's getting a lot of lateral force too trying to hold this gate up that was the block of concrete that came out of it and uh, that bar is uh, six inch long. Okay, so that's a that's a block of concrete. To compare, they've got full bags of concrete here right next to it. I would say that block of concrete that got pulled out is maybe half a bag worth of concrete. And that's the craziest thing. So this is another place that some contractors will try to cut corners is by using either uh, less concrete than is needed or no concrete at all. And ultimately a bag of a concrete is what, $4.50, $5 a bag maybe. So to, you're cutting a corner to say $5 a post, it really doesn't make any sense at all. And there's probably about an inch in the ground. So there's not a right big chunk of concrete. And yet, that's the post that they've put in. I'm expecting that to hold up the gate. Uh, and I'm not talking a little garden gate like that. I'm talking a full-size gate. Wow, there's a huge gate. <laughs> I don't know if he says how big it is, but I bet that thing's probably 12 foot. So, uh, I don't mind cracky. I mean, I'm putting in big six inch posts, three foot in, so uh, you can see that that just isn't right. So he mentions it there that he's setting their post three foot deep with a six by six post. So that's that's spot on. You know, it's right on the money. If you're going to use wood post, you'd use a larger post. You know, he's using a six by six and setting it three foot deep for a gate this size. That's absolutely right. Um, you know, we usually take it a step further and would use a steel post just to prevent warping and twisting. Um, but I like the fact that he's going three foot deep. I mean, that's that's a significant post hole. It's a lot of concrete. Uh, to support a, what looks like a very large gate. I mean, uh, this is a new build, and obviously the contractors were in a rush to uh, get it finished, but that's no good really. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye on your contractors. All right, so there's the gate itself. Uh, and that is a huge, and it's a double gate, so that certainly helps take the weight off of uh, any one post, but man, that is a huge gate. Props to this contractor for uh, making it right. Well, making someone else's shortcuts right. I like what he did here too. So you can see that it's not on level terrain. It's on a slope. So he actually built those gates to accommodate the slope so that the top stays consistent with the grade. 
really well done. So, you know, overall we saw two shortcuts that we see all the time. We see a shallow set post, you know, in this case it was six or seven inches deep and not nearly enough concrete to support, to really support any post, a fence post, much less a gate post so that's holding a gate this size. Um, so unfortunately it's something we see quite a lot. Let's watch the next video. All right, so first impressions here, uh, how to build a privacy fence on a budget. Question we get all the time. You know, I absolutely understand people have budgets, the households have budgets. What's up guys, hope you all are doing well. Today we are standing in my new backyard of my investment property that I bought with my father. And um, today we are putting in a fence. We have about 350 feet of fence to go in. 350 feet of fence is not a small fence. That is a good sized yard. As you can see, I have already put down string down here around all four sides. And um, we're gonna go ahead and start putting in the post. So, hope you guys enjoy. All right, so he's off to a great start. He's got a string line out. One of our first steps is to lay a string line out so that we can visualize with the homeowner uh, exactly where that fence line's going. And also, everyone on site's on the same page on exactly where that fence is going. He's off to a great start. Post number one is complete. Couple things here. So he's using a quick crete. It's a pre-packaged concrete product. I like it a lot. It's consistent bag to bag, means he's gonna get the same consistency of concrete throughout the fence install. Uh, also looks like he's got a nice little uh, piece of digging equipment. I'm not sure what brand that is, but I used to use a digging machine a lot like this uh, when I was working for my dad through high school. So they make it easy, but they can also throw you for a loop if you hit a rock. And the auger broke. How are you feeling? Good. Uh, I don't think he's feeling very good right there. Equipment broke down. It's obviously hot. They're talking about frozen water, so I think he might not have been telling the full truth what he's doing good. Nice intro. I like that a lot. So to start the process of building the fence, uh, once you have your string line marked out, I basically just mark out eight foot sections and that's where we're going to put our four by four. Um, we did rent an auger for this project, but unfortunately it broke after uh, the full first uh, hole was dug. So we dug all these holes by hand, uh, but you're going to want to dig your hole about two, uh, two to two and a half feet deep. Uh, ours are about two, be two feet deep each uh, and about uh, six to eight inches wide. So once you're done digging, uh, you're just gonna wanna lay your post hole in, or uh, your post in, and then all you have to do is you're gonna wanna wet the uh, post and the hole first, just a little bit with the hose, and then pour in your concrete uh, almost all the way to the top of uh, your dirt. You're gonna, leave a you're gonna want to leave a couple of inches uh, just so you can cover up that concrete so it's not so ugly. Okay, so I'm gonna take a guess uh, that this this young man has had some fencing experience because he's doing things almost exactly how we how we do them, how we lay the fence out. One difference is you saw a cut there where he was measuring each post. So he'd set a post and then measure eight feet. So one difference there is we actually lay out the entire project before we start digging. Just again, so we can kind of visualize where if a post is gonna run into a tree or run into tree roots or something, we can adjust two or three posts back to make it look fairly even. But yeah, so he's using Quickrete product. It sounds like he's setting it well. He's filling it up almost to the top, but leaving a few inches. That's a great tip. It's the one that we use a lot because then you can backfill dirt over, seed it, and it'll the grass will grow and you'll never know, you know, the ground was disturbed there. So he's, he's off and running on a very good start here. You're going to want to pour your concrete in. It takes about three bags for every two posts, and then uh, just simply wet it with the hose. Uh, I didn't do any exact measurements with the water, just enough to where the concrete looks like it's plenty soaked. And then right here you can see uh, we just took a stick and uh, poked the uh, concrete basically just to uh, get the water all the way down into it and uh, to get out any air bubbles. Uh, and then once you're done with that, you just simply cover it back up with dirt and uh, just rinse it off again if you need to uh, with the hose if any concrete got stuck to it and then you'll be done with uh, putting their post in. So that's actually a really good tip that a lot of people miss that step is so you saw them with the rod. Uh, driving it down into the concrete to get water down into that dried portion of the concrete. A lot of people skip that step and, and you would end up with concrete that's really well set on the top, really well set on the bottom, and probably the edges where it sucks moisture out of the ground, but the core is left sometimes crumbling. Um, so I like to see that little tip in there as well. 
Your next step is just take your tape measure and place it at the ground, the bottom of your 4x4, and then um, just draw up to 22 inches and give yourself a little line there. Once you've done that, uh, we're going to worry about the 2x4s next. Uh, I put in screws in each one end of it, each end of the 2x4 just to make it easier to put on. Uh, but once you have your screws in, then just simply lift your 2x4 up uh, with a partner and go ahead and screw that into your 4x4 and it should just cut right down the center of your 4x4. Now, so this is one place where we probably deviate from the system he's using. What we would do is we would take a string line again and run it across the top of every post on that line uh, so that we could step back and visualize how the top of that fence is going to run. Uh, if you simply measure up, uh, in his case, 62 inches and place your two before on every post at 62 inches, if you have a, a change in grade, it could really make that fence look like a roller coaster. So we would take a string line, string out the entire line of fence, make marks at, in his case, 62 inches, but then we would adjust each one, step back and look at it so you have a nice flowing top. Uh, he's also using screws. We've talked about that a lot, screws versus nails. My issue with using screws is you can really over torque those screws. You know, there's no setting to where you get those screws set exactly the same. Could have a possibility of popping those screw heads off. Keep in mind when you're putting these in, uh, these, four, these two by fours are not gonna be completely level. You want them to follow the landscape, uh, but you don't want them to be completely level. So basically just uh, try and get them fairly level with your landscape, but then also uh, it's more just important that they look good uh, and that they look correct. So just kinda eyeball it as you go. Also some of the uh, two by fours needed to be cut down to size. Uh, you know, when you get to your ends and stuff, you will have to cut some because they aren't gonna break exactly at eight feet. Absolutely use a chainsaw. Using correct safety gear, not keeping your feet really that close to the board. Using a handsaw, absolutely take forever. The same place that you rent the any other equipment, I'm sure you can rent a chainsaw if you don't have one, but uh, it'll be a lot cleaner of a look too. So that's what I'm doing here, and then we're just gonna go ahead and put the shorter two by fours up. The next step is just going to be to mark down from that 2x4. Uh, these measurements aren't exact and they will vary by your type of fence and how high you want your fence to be. Uh, but just pick a good number. Uh, I put my bottom board about a foot up from the ground and then um, just the next board or the middle board I just basically cut that distance in half. So that's what we're doing here. We're just going to mark that out. So we would actually, when we're installing it, we'd actually take six inches off the top, six inches up off the ground and then centered in the middle. Uh, 12 inches, you know, a foot off the ground, that's quite a lot. What you'd do there is you'd be welcoming the boards to kick out. You, they'd warp on the bottom or twist on the bottom. 12 inches is really giving that board a lot of leeway uh, to get out of shape. So we know where to put our other 2x4s. And then we're just going to repeat that process of putting up the 2x4s. Uh, we did do the top ones first and then the uh, second two uh, just to make it easier. And obviously uh, putting up a fence can be quite repetitive at times, so it is nice to have a partner because uh, putting up these 2x4s goes a little faster that way. You absolutely always want a helper. He obviously has a helper there. You always want someone else with you on a job site, whether it's fencing or really anything else. I mean, you never know what could happen if there's a safety issue, if, you know, God forbid you get hurt. You always want at least one other person with you uh, when you're doing any sort of work, much less building fence. At the end of day three, we had the majority of the posts in and the majority of the two by fours uh, bracing those and we were ready for fence slats. So you kind of see what I'm talking about as far as when you measure each post. The fence, you know, is starting to get that roller coaster effect where it starts, it comes up, it goes straight, it comes up, it goes down. Just because the grade wasn't level, I mean, it rarely is, uh, but you really, you want to take a string line. If he had taken a string line to each post, he could have stepped back and seen that he would like to adjust it a little bit to get a nice smooth transition on the top line. But all in all, it's still, it's still a good looking fence so far. We did have to purchase some new tools. We got a six gallon uh, rigid air compressor and a DeWalt uh, nail gun. I believe it's 18 gauge. We got both of these new tools for about $250 together and uh, they're both pretty quality tools and I would recommend them. They did work very well for us. 
So it looks like that's a staple gun, and rather than a nail gun, you would definitely want to use nails in this. And, and it very well could have been a nail gun, but it looked like a staple gun. Ring shank nails, galvanized, are uh, absolutely the choice here. I'm not sure also, I don't see a jig for how he's how he's setting his pickets, uh, the height of the pickets in comparison with the top 2x4. Uh, usually there would be a jig that sits about 6 inches for us, 6 inches off that 2x4 so that the pickets stay consistent because again remember we've already set our top line with the level so if we use a jig and each picket is consistent with the 2x4 it's going to follow that grade really nice. One thing here too is he hasn't cut his post yet. I would absolutely recommend cutting the post before you put up pickets that way you can cut them even with the top two before. Nice finished look. There's not really much reason for it to stick above the two before like that. And if you try to come back and cut that four before after the pickets are up, you could absolutely get into uh, cutting pickets too. So then we're, as we put up the uh, fence boards, we're just gonna put two nails in uh, each of the two by fours. Um, and also if your yard is uh, very hilly, I would recommend running string lines. Uh, but for most of my yard, uh, everything was fairly level and fairly, um, Flat, so I didn't run any string lines except for one or two places in the yard where we had a steep incline. Uh, but besides that, I just mainly eyeballed it. There were, again, uh, fence slats that I had to cut, and also uh, I did dig down in certain parts to uh, get a nice clean line at the top of your fence slats. I also don't see him leveling the pickets. And that's a that's one way you can get really off on fence pickets is the fence pickets are hardly ever straight. Uh, they, some of them will have a bow. Some of them just simply aren't cut straight. I mean, these things are cut a lot of them at a time in a high production facility. Sometimes that gets off. So you definitely want to level not every picket, but every fourth or fifth picket. Just to make sure you don't get too far off a of level. So you kind of start to see a problem forming here in that the top of the pickets aren't uh, level with each other. They're not straight with each other uh, because he's using the grade to to align his pickets, the picket height. You really have to use a jig or, or some sort of tool to make sure those pickets are nice and straight with each other or else you'll start getting into some pickets being higher or lower than other pickets. Uh, you can start to see that happening already. Okay guys, it's end of day five. Uh, we've been working all day, but the fence looks fantastic as you can see. Um, tomorrow should be exciting. We should be able to get the finish, um, get the fence finished. Um, and we're also getting the house kind of deep clean before we go in and start working on the inside of that. So pretty exciting stuff. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. <clears throat> all right guys, so as you can see, the fence is now complete. It looks really, really great. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The dogs, of course, are enjoying the yard. Um, that's pretty much the biggest reason that we put up this fence was to have them here and so that they would have a place to uh, run around. But it really, really looks great. Uh, if you guys didn't already know, the house that we're staying in right now is actually an investment property of mine. Um, so we are doing a bunch of renovations. So as you can see, this area looks a little different too. We put in a deck here. Um, I did that all myself too, with a little help from my father. And then up here farther, you can see the front gate, all this. So one problem you see kind of as, it's hard to see it precisely as the camera moves around a lot, but the picket height above the two before varies pretty greatly. Now here at the corner, you see that it's eight or 10 inches above the two before, but further down the fence line, it looks like it's almost a foot off the two before. Probably, I mean, structurally it's not an issue, but to my eye, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. This is really still cluttered because we need to sort through everything and throw, them, throw some things away, but here's our gate. I didn't uh, film this part because it is fairly straightforward, but uh, you're gonna wanna go to Home Depot and pick yourself up some hardware. These corner brackets you're obviously gonna need, and then, you know, right over here we have the actual uh, latch. I 
personally chose one that locks so that way you can um, you know lock it at night and stuff um, but you're gonna need that and then obviously on the outside you have your handle your little latch there and then both hinges so that's pretty straightforward and you can buy you can buy um, all those pieces in basically one big bag one big set uh, at Home Depot or Lowe's but that's pretty much it guys now I caught one thing that really drives me crazy when I look at fences on that gate post the post actually is a Above the pickets, uh, so a lot of these other uh, these other posts, the post is above the two before, but below the picket, so you don't really see it from the outside. But that gate hinge post is above the pickets. Drives me nuts. All right, so overall, it is a well built fence. I mean, structurally, that fence is going to be really strong. He had mentioned that he dug the fence post, you know, to depth. He used, he said, three three bags of concrete for every two posts, so a bag and a half of concrete per post. That's absolutely adequate it's above adequate really a lot of times the standard is one bag per hole so a bag and a half he, he went above and beyond there he used screws on the two befores instead of ring shank nails it'll be strong for a while my worry is that if some of those screws got over torqued the heads might pop off but that's certainly not a not a short-term problem that'd be more of a long-term problem the biggest thing is cutting the post level with that top two before and using a string line when setting the height of the two by fours, following it up with using a jig when you're nailing your pickets so that the pickets have are a consistent height above the two by four. Since you set the two by four height with a string line, you step back and made sure it followed grade, everything's gonna come along nicely. So really, it's a well-built fence. There's probably just a few things I would have changed uh, aesthetically to make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye, but I bet this fence will be around for quite a while. You know, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. If you've got a video that you think we should watch and review, why don't you let us know in the comments below? I'd love to hear from you. Until then, we'll talk to you later.